Well, I've been in love with the reef for probably most of my life. I first saw the reef in 1969 as a 10-year-old. While the men were walking on the moon, I was glued to the reef. It's got habitat that supports thousands upon thousands of species, all of which work together to make this a wonderful place. The Great Barrier Reef is still great, but it's facing some challenges that we need to deal with. We've got climate change now that's, that's really the number one threat. Some of the work we've done on Heron Island has really started to look at recreating the future and exploring what ecosystems will look like if you change the CO2 and change the temperature. We've grown these little miniature replicas of, of the reef. We take water from the reef crest, it flows through a special chamber which adds CO2 and temperature, and you can then replicate what happens in a world in which we don't deal with CO2. And what you see is really interesting. Reef one, you have much of what you've got today. But if you don't take action on climate change, you get to reef two. And that's where the corals have disappeared, all the invertebrates, all these little creatures that live around those reefs have disappeared, and the reef has collapsed. Reef number three is the most interesting. If you do something, you can get to a condition where actually you do preserve a lot of coral. The experiments do have a message of hope. If we take action on climate change, we'll still have a reef that functions like a reef. And that, that's really important because once this is gone, and it will be if we don't deal with the emissions of CO2, then we will have lost something that can never be brought back. The solutions here involve the entire community. We can solve the challenge of climate change and we can preserve a large part of the reef, but we've got to start today.